everybody, I am Tiffany and I am bringing you another movie review today. Let's go! Knocking out another movie. I feel so proud. I feel like I've been knocking out movies and books left and right and I feel really good. As you have noticed, I have been doing a lot of new releases that have just come out and don't worry, I have all of your other movies too that you have requested. I've been going to the movies a lot with friends and family, but I've seen a lot of movies that just came out. So those are the most recent movies I see and then I decided to do movie reviews for them since I just saw them and they're fresh in my head and wonderful and fantastic. But I do promise that I will start getting to the movies you guys have requested because I love you guys and I love all of your requests so so much and I really appreciate every time I see one and I feel very thankful to have all you guys watching this video. The movie I am reviewing today if you haven't viewed the title of this video already is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Now this is the fifth movie overall, I believe, in the Jurassic franchise. You can tell me if I'm wrong, that's cool, but I believe it's the fifth. It's the second movie in the second trilogy. That's kind of what I call it. It's the follow-up trilogy to the original trilogy. I personally thought it was good. I feel like it was a filler movie. You had the first movie, which was awesome and actually did a lot better than expected. Then you have this movie, which kind of fills in the gaps to where they want this franchise to go. Then you have the final movie, which is going to be the epic finale whenever that movie decides to come out. I thought overall it was good. It wasn't my favorite. I liked the first one a lot better. And of course, nothing's going to beat the original Jurassic Park, okay? The first movie was absolutely fantastic. For those of you who want statistics, this movie has a 6.6 .6 out of 10 on IMDb, which I say is pretty accurate. Sixes are not bad. They are decent. It just means they're not absolutely amazing and they're more popcorn movies. I agree this is kind of one of those movies where it's super fun and entertaining, but it's not the best movie in the world. I still love everybody in it and I thought they did a really great job. I think overall just the storyline a little bit fell flat for me in this one, but overall it was still a really fun experience and you got the thrills and scares that come with Jurassic Park a bit, which was nice. It had the same vibe still, which I really liked. For those of you who want a synopsis and don't know what the heck Jurassic Park is, well if you don't know what Jurassic Park is, then I don't know if you been living under a rock? I have no idea, but you need to catch up fast because Jurassic Park is pretty legendary in the movie world, alright? I will introduce it to you myself if I need be because you need to see Jurassic Park, especially the first, and then you can watch the others and decide for yourself if you like those or not. The synopsis overall of the whole franchise is that dinosaurs have been recreated, they are alive now in the present world. What? crazy through genetic makeup all of that crazy scientist stuff we were able to recreate dinosaurs and stuff goes pretty much awry jurassic park was about the original guy who created this and he tried to create an amusement park based off of these dinosaurs so you have to go watch that to see what happens with that one and jurassic world the first one is like a recreation or better version i guess of jurassic park amusement park wise this one of course takes place after the events of jurassic world I don't really want to spoil it for you because I think you should watch the first movie and then watch this one. But of course stuff goes awry, stuff doesn't go as planned, and dinosaurs are scary. That's what I've learned from this whole franchise is that we should not have dinosaurs alive. For those of you who want to know the actors, this stars Chris Pratt, Dallas Bryce Howard, Jeff Goldblum makes an appearance in it which is fun. He's right at the beginning so it's not a spoiler. It's not a surprise. He, he makes a cameo basically. And it has a bunch of other awesome people. Your two main known people are going to be Chris Pratt and Dallas Bryce Howard because they are the leads in this movie. And they are awesome by the way. Their characters I really really do like overall. But sadly there isn't really that much more I can tell you without spoiling you so I suggest you go see this movie. It's still in theaters right now. It's doing really well at the box office. And I suggest you go watch it for yourself and get your own opinion on the movie and then come back and you can tell me how you felt about it overall. But thank you so much for joining me non spoilery people. Go check this out. It is a fun ride. Not the best movie ever, but I still think you should give it a shot. I personally really did enjoy myself in the movie. It just wasn't as good as the first one I thought. Have a great day. I'll see you when you've watched this movie again. And don't go get eaten by a dinosaur. Alright, goodbye! Spoilery time! Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Like I said, this was a fun movie. It had its scares in there, but it wasn't the absolute best for me. The opening was great though. It had the same vibe as the original Jurassic Park I felt like, where you feel that nervous anxiety because you know there's a dinosaur there, but they don't notice the dinosaur. 
oh, it was good. One thing that was cool about the original Jurassic Park opening is that you didn't actually see the dinosaurs, you just kind of saw what they did. They grab a person and drag him into the cage. Now the beginning of this movie had that same type of vibe, not completely because you do see the dinosaurs, but it still gave me that nervous anxiety feeling that I got at the beginning of the first one, which was awesome. And it was an intense scene. You see the guys that are underwater, then you see the thing kind of come up behind it, and then they just go blank. You don't hear them anymore. It just goes silent, which creates that eerie vibe. Then you see the guy out there in the rain, and you see the bushes moving, and you see his fellow companions yelling at him to go. It just gave you that same anxiety because you couldn't see exactly what it was at first until it was too late. They even gave a little bit of like awe towards it because he's so close and you think he's gonna make it but then the giant underwater dinosaur. I don't know what it's called so please don't try and make me say the names of all these dinosaurs. I'm just gonna call it the underwater dinosaur. The underwater dinosaur snaps up and just chomps down on him and aw it was sad. It was a little bit funny. But it was sad. And then you cut to kind of the whole storyline of it. It was a little bit weird having this whole thing with the dinosaurs where they're trying to make sure they don't go extinct and the volcano on the island is becoming active and might destroy all the dinosaurs. It just felt a little bit weird to me. I guess because I just didn't have a ton of personal connection with the dinosaurs, except for Blue, of course, because Blue was trained by Chris Pratt's character, Owen Grady. That was something about the original Jurassic Park is that while you had the scary T-Rex and raptors, you had a connection also to these little beautiful moments of these nice dinosaurs that you just want to hug and love and are not cuddly because they're giant, but still they're adorable. And those you actually care for and you don't want anything to happen to. In the Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, to me they didn't establish enough connection for me with the dinosaurs that when they had this whole thing where they're trying to make sure the dinosaurs don't go extinct, it didn't make complete sense to me. The one thing that Jurassic World did that was really cool was make you actually care about the raptors though because of course in the original ones they're the enemies and then Jurassic World flips them and they're still kind of enemies but they're not completely. They actually have been trained and they're actually kind of the good guys now. They're the anti-heroes of the dinosaur world. It's been a while since I've seen Jurassic World, so I kind of have to remember everything from it, but Claire, who is Bryce Dallas Howard's character, it just surprised me that she was leading this because her park got completely destroyed by a monster dinosaur she created. In my mind, I didn't think she'd be advocating for it as much. I think Owens could have been because he wants to save Blue, but her character, I didn't see it happening as much. So when it opened with her running this whole thing, it was a little bit of a shock to me, but it wasn't too bad of a shock. I just felt a little bit off. The one moment that really got me with the dinosaurs that made me go, oh, like, I don't want you to die, was actually when they went to the island and Claire's trying to save all the dinosaurs and the volcano erupts and goes, Bleh, and almost destroys them. The part that got me was actually when they were on the ship, slowly floating away from it. Because you see the giant dinosaur with the long neck who is so sweet and precious and I remember him from the first one and you just see him go down in flames that was heartbreaking that I felt and I just wanted to run and save the dinosaur and say why didn't we get him like he was trying to go to the ship and then he couldn't and then he didn't make it and it was just so sad that is my favorite dinosaur you have a special moment with that dinosaur in the first one you don't want it to die in this one and that was a punch in the gut because they're so precious. I guess what made this one different and why I call it a filler movie is because I didn't like the location of where everything happened. You have the whole island sequence, which was cool, but then everything else took place at the mansion. It just felt too confined to me. I don't want to say it should have been on a grander scale, but it kind of should have been in a way, in my opinion. And I think part of it too was that I didn't have enough characters that I was absolutely saying, oh my gosh, I don't want them to die. A lot of them, I wanted the dinosaurs to get because they were jerks. In the first Jurassic Park, even though you don't have this whole park that's open and there's a ton of different people in danger, you had this small group of characters that you really, really, really appreciated and you cared about each one deeply and wondered if they were going to make it out or not and you felt it for every single one of those characters. And I think that Jurassic World, the first one, did that too because you got to know Claire, you got to know Owen, then you had the two kids as well that you're worried about them. So I guess that's what made it interesting too is because kind of like the first 
first one, Jurassic World had different characters in different places, and you got to explore everything more and experience perilous situations with different characters. Each character was dealing with something else. They weren't all dealing with the same thing, and they all weren't in one giant space. They were all spread out throughout the park, and I think that's what made it interesting in the first one and in Jurassic World, because Jurassic World did the same thing, where everyone's separated and they're trying to get back together and find each other, but they're each dealing with different elements within the park, which I thought was really cool, and then eventually it all ties up together in the end. This one, they were so confined, it wasn't so spread out, there wasn't much place to go, in all honesty, with inside the mansion. The creepy dinosaur they created, which was this crazy raptor, was actually really, really cool. And I liked how creepy it was. That raptor scared me. I just wish they could have used it more than they did. The most terrifying part to me was when that little girl was in her bedroom. And that velociraptor thing came into her window. It had the nail and it was just going like... On the floor the whole time. And you see him creeping up and the shadows creeping. That was Jurassic Park to me. That was awesome. That was scary. It was intense. You didn't know what was going to happen. And on top of that, she's laying in her bed. Clearly awake. Clearly moving. I didn't think she was going to die. But it was still nerve-wracking, okay? That thing is right there tapping his little claw. That was intimidating. And when they're in the museum, too, it is intimidating because you're trying to avoid that stupid thing. And it's doing this little clicky thing with its nail. And it's just... It's scary, and they have to be quiet, and they're trying to get to the door. It's intense. That's what I liked, and I feel like you didn't get enough of that. Because that was the main dinosaur you were fighting against. The others, you didn't really have to worry about because they were all locked up. And I think that was something with the others, too, was that you had so many different dinosaurs. You had the good guys, and then you had the bad ones that you're trying to avoid, and you dealt with all of them at once. Where this one... You kind of had one moment where you had a good dinosaur do something, but other than that, you're dealing with this one ultra mega dinosaur. For me, I wanted more of that intense fear because that's what made the first one and Jurassic World super great. The dinosaur connection with Blue, though, was awesome. I loved Blue, and I loved that you get to see little videos of Owen training her when she's young and a baby and being super obedient, and it's adorable. The part where he pretends to be sad and she goes and comforts him. Oh my god, it's so cute! Chris Pratt's character is my favorite character out of all of them, definitely. He's just super relatable super fun. You can tell he really cares for the dinosaurs. I just really like him. Clara I like too. She can get on my nerves a tiny bit, but I think in the first one she got on my nerves a bit more than in this one. So I felt like her character development was actually really good in this one. Now the one storyline that really didn't hit me, but I am curious to see maybe where it goes, is with the granddaughter of Benjamin Lockwood. Maisie Lockwood I think her name is. I feel like I didn't get enough personal connection maybe in order for me to completely appreciate the twist with this girl. There are more in Jurassic Park 2 and 3 that talks about these characters more. At least Lockwood. They may have talked about him somewhat in the first one because he was good friends with the scientists in the first one, but it's been a while since I've seen Jurassic Park, so I do have to go back and watch that and see if they talk about Lockwood a bit more. But I don't really remember them saying anything super significant. And I'm wondering in the second and third if there's more backstory to this guy. Because that would be actually extremely helpful to me. If there is more info on those, let me know actually, because I'd like to know. Because for me, once it showed that she was a clone, I didn't have the super emotional impact of, <gasps> they did that to her? What? It would have been interesting if there is more information on them that you kind of figure out that he did that, and then you kind of know about it all along. And then she finds out that would be a bigger emotional impact because she doesn't realize that she's basically the reincarnation of her mother. Like, what happened to the mom? Is this in another movie? I'm trying to remember and I can't think of it. I want to know what happened with that. And if I know what happens with that, then I think I'd have more of an emotional impact with her finding out that she's a clone. She made the most stupid decision, though, at the end. You see that Claire's about to push the button. And while you feel for these dinosaurs and that you don't really want them to die, that was a little bit of a punch in the gut, you still don't want anybody to push that button because that's just plain stupid. And of course, the girl pushes the button. And I'm just sitting there thinking, what the heck are you doing? I think everybody in the audience just went... What? That's the most casual way for dinosaurs to get out in this world. It should have been more climactic. Not that she decides to hit the button because she says, they're like me, they're clones. You just ruined all of humankind. Do you understand that? They're gonna die.
They're gonna straight up die. A lot of people are, and because of you. And they're gonna blame you. So there was no point of hitting that button ever. I thought Claire was gonna do it, and I was so mad at first, because I was saying this is not how it's gonna end with her pushing the button, because Claire can't be that stupid. And then, of course, the little child comes in and does it for her, now doesn't she? Would have even been more impactful if it didn't happen, and you saw the dinosaurs kind of fade, and that would have hurt a lot more. But this is a trilogy, so you do need to find a way for the dinosaurs to survive. But it should be a different way. It shouldn't be this way. That is really all I have to say about this movie. Overall, I did enjoy it. Like I said, I had a good time. There were moments of it that were really great and other moments that fell flat, but overall, I enjoyed it. If you stuck to the spoilers and still haven't watched it, I still suggest you do. Like I always say at the end of every video, it's one thing me telling you, it's another thing you experiencing it for yourself. So go and watch it and then tell me how you feel about it. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any other movies or book recommendations that you would like me to watch or read for you, leave them in the comments below and I'll go check them out. If you want updates on my videos and when I'm posting them or whether there's not going to be one this week or something special is coming up, you can check out my blog. There's a link to it right here and there's a description to it below as well. So make sure you go check it out if you want updates on everything. And I give you acting updates as well because I am an actress and I like to share my adventures when I can. Thank Thank you so much. Have an awesome day, evening, afternoon, whatever time of the day you're watching this end. Don't forget to be awesome and don't get eaten by a T-Rex. Alright, goodbye!